for all types of disabilities. I'm the, the official well, one of the official ambassadors for Operation House Call for the Art of Massachusetts, a fully fellow for the Doug Foley Jr. Foundation for Autism, the co-chair of Support Decision Making Coalition in Massachusetts, a board member of Mass Advocates for Children, and a cancer survivor who happens to have autism. Today I'm going to focus on the importance of building a rapport and not judging someone uh, because they may happen to have a disability. And I just realized I was on the wrong page. Okay. <laughs> Can I go I just to the imagine what I just previously said, just with this. <laughs> In 2021, I was diagnosed with human sarcoma, which is a rare form of cancer. This is my oncologist, Dr. Cody. On my very first meeting with him, he listened to my voice when I told him I wanted him to give all the information to my mom and dad. And I would wait and wait because it was too much for me to process. Without knowing all the information himself, Dr. Cody respected my support decision-making agreement, which is an alternative to guardianship, because his goal was to make uh, me well, and he was open to, open to communicating the information differently. It was okay that my mom and dad were not just my parents, but also my support people. And together, the three of them went together to explain things to me. Now, let me tell you a little bit about support decision making. A lot of people like me have a guardian. I don't. I use something called support decision making. Support decision making is an alternative to guardianship with a person, me. It's a group of people I trust to help them make decisions. I have used support decision making in my fight against cancer and mental health in most aspects of my life today. This is a picture of my supported decision making team. I would not be the person I am today without support decision making. For example, when I was six months into chemotherapy and, and two weeks into radiation, I came home one day and had after radiation treatment, and my body and mind were feeling horrible and hopeless. I ended up in my bedroom crying and just really wanted to give up. I told my mom, I don't care what happens to me. I just want to stop, even causing the tumor to kill me. My mom had to take time to process all this herself, but when she came back into my room, she came back, not as my mom, but as my support person. She said to me, Jonathan, I do not know what the answer to this all is, but if you put your faith in me as your support person, I'm going to try my hardest to help you figure this out. From there, I gave my mom the okay to contact my medical team uh, to set up an emergency Zoom meeting, and I told them that I did not want to be a part of the uh, conversation and that my mom would relay the information back to me. The medical team, along with my mom, came up with a different plan for me to think about. After the meeting, I was able to talk to my healthcare supporters about the plan. I got my questions answered, and then I agreed to move forward uh, with it. The plan ultimately saved my life while also taking care of my mental health at the same time. I believe everyone should have the right uh, to choose the way they want to live so they can live their best lives to the fullest. My medical team all worked together to get to know me as a person. They built the rapport with me so they can build the trust with, so I can build the trust with them. They spent the time getting to know uh, what I needed and why I needed them. They wanted to know what I do for work and also what brings me joy. This all made it possible for me to trust my medical team with my body and life. Pictured here is my last day of chemo when my medical team all got together and had a Cookie Monster uh, celebration. Infinite to the monster. <laughs> Some accommodations I needed when I go to the doctors are to have healthcare professionals talk to me and greet me when they come into the room, not just my mom. I'm the patient and my mom is my support. I like to have a countdown for when a shot is given or blood is taken. This makes me feel less than anxious. I have to have a processing disorder, uh, so I may need to record our session and I also may need extra time to respond to your questions, so I ask that you please be patient with me. Please allow me to bring my own equipment, such as headphones, sunglasses, and even fidget toys with me. I also may get up and pace around the room to process all the information that is being said during my appointment. Pictured here is me getting my blood taken after the countdown and my cancer journey. Well, uh, during my cancer journey, I always brought this cookie monster to my appointment. He actually has a real port in place inside of him. Don't ask how we got that. <laughs> It was legal, don't worry. <laughs> now my second takeaway for all of you is to leave you all with this. People may have, may have a disability, but that's just a piece of them. I'm more than just autism. Autism is just a piece of me, like my arm or my 
my life is it is not all of me. You may open my child and see I have autism. Please don't assume things about me because of that. Pictured here is a time I had to go to the ER in the middle of the night. I felt like I was having a heart attack. Long story short, when I got to the ER, the nurse was so focused on the fact that I was autistic over a person in pain. She spoke to me in a very demeaning voice like that and made me cry. I became extremely dehydrated on top of my pain, and my mom had to ask her to leave and request a new nurse, and then I was properly treated. Fast forward to 2023, and I'm still finding that the word autism in my chart is causing a lot of discrimination. This past March, I was denied healthcare for an endoscopy because a nurse at the center saw that I was autistic in my chart and assumed I would have some so-called behaviors that would make myself and others uh, feel unsafe, well, unsafe, I should say, instead of getting to know me as a person and how best to communicate with me because of my disability, even if I did have challenging behaviors, I still deserve to have a procedure done that can be diagnostically important to my wellness and quality of life and should not have to wait months for the care. I believe everyone's life matters. Pictured here is me testifying at the State House for the health care discrimination bill. My current medical team is like family to me. I am now two years cancer free, and during my last visit in November, we were all talking about how challenging my treatment was. And I told them that I would do it all over again because it brought them into my, all into my life. I know whatever healthcare issues I may have, I am blessed with the best medical team and that I can serve family. I love them, and I know they love me too. Here we are celebrating November uh, two years cancer free. Thank you.